Welcome to uh, this video. Um, I would like to uh, talk today a little bit about the current crisis in Syria and actually more about the underlying causes, um, namely the problems in our political system and our problems with leadership in general. Um, I recently watched a documentary on uh, the Assad al-Assad family and um, what we see here is that actually the problem is, has to do a lot with the system of governance. Um, so there can be various systems of governance and most of our systems of governance are bureaucratic in nature. So uh, bureaucracy, kratos is power, bureau, well it's a, it's a bureau, it's a position. And this basically shows that a person's power is defined by what position he has within a structure, within a system. Um, so if in a bureaucratic system the persons who are in those, uh, yeah, have power or control of these bureaus, have the correct qualities and the correct personality and talents, then a bureaucratic system works just fine. Uh, the problem is that a bureaucratic system is often not really tailored to the individual and also because of human desire to have more, to progress, uh, greed, lust for power, lust for money, people often aspire to positions to which they are not suited. So if we take a very concrete case and if we look at uh, Bashar al-Assad, uh, what we see is that his father, the patriarch, um, actually groomed his brother to be the next strong man to rule Syria. And Bashar was yeah, studying to be a, a doctor. And um, I think it's in a way a tragedy that his brother died and he couldn't continue in his chosen profession to become a doctor. Because he has many qualities which would make him a good doctor. but unfortunately not the qualities which are needed for a position as president and he's not alone in this if we look at many countries we have prime ministers or presidents or kings or queens who are not really suited to the position and this is a danger because in a way the dynasty can collapse or it can be weakened um, and other powers can try to topple the system disrupt the system and I look upon this as actually something natural um, because if a position, a system is working well and all positions are filled by people who are capable, who are suited to the position, it is quite stable. And when this is no longer the case, then a new balance is sought because there is no longer the ability to make the system work. And in a way it's a self-healing uh, response of a society to try to change the system and supplant it by a newer system which will hopefully work better. The big question we should be asking ourselves is do we want to keep on working with a bureaucracy? So bureaucracy has some appeals. Uh, one of the appeals is stability. It doesn't matter who is in power or what changes, the system remains the same. It is just the people who change. So the government is still the government, the ministries are still the ministries, it's just that different people take the position of minister or secretary. Um, this system grants that stability, but um, it is only really a good or stable system if the persons who are given that post also have the necessary talents. This is where it becomes a little bit tricky. Um, because if we look at the, at the case of uh, Bashar al-Assad, um, often uh, a true leader has um, a very assertive um, power or at least a very strong energy, very strong willpower so other people are swept along in his or her vision or his or her mood at least. And uh, if I look at the energy body of Bashar al-Assad he is relatively strong but he does not possess that type of strength. Um, so what it turns out is that instead of the, in a way, 
like his father and his brother were the military leaders who had a vision of themselves in a way being the father of the nation um, and that they were leading the nation. They had a will, they had a vision and the entire country is swept along in that. We see in Bashar al-Assad that he is very much more a man of reason and a man who is more prone to um, negotiation. And uh, what we see often is that people who yeah, do not have that vision become puppets or entranced by people who do have that vision. So we saw it in, for instance, before the Russian Revolution, uh, that Rasputin had a very strong influence because he was energetically the stronger. And we also see it uh, a lot in the US and here also in Syria, that there are actually other powers behind the throne. Um, who have their ideas and their visions and that the uh, presidents are in a way just the figureheads and um, trying to navigate, trying to survive in this stream of energy, in this flow of power which they can't completely control anymore. So he's much more of what you could say uh, a businessman or a lobbyist was trying to do his level best to yeah make the best out of the situation he finds himself in but he's unable to control it and he's rather at the mercy of those yeah powers who create these flows who create these uprisings who create uh, plans and ideals and he's just a moderator not a generator in this case so if we look at the expectations and the uh, yeah, image of the media, so he's often portrayed as like the despotic leader, the tyrant, and um, in a way people yeah, expect from him as a tyrant to be able to control the situation, to change everything around. But he is neither the tyrant nor has that yeah, capability. So he finds himself in a rather... Um, yeah, challenging situation where people expect him to have a certain power. He can't really show weakness because that would aggravate the situation, but he can't get out of it either. Um, and who's at, at fault? Is Bashar al-Assad at fault or the people who put him in this position or the people who do not you know, accept his limitations and who accept yeah, a person in his position uh, to behave differently, to have different types of powers and talents. And the problem is all of the above. It's a situation which was created by a lot of factors. There's historical factors, there's the expectations of people, there's also the ignorance of people who can't see or realize the capabilities of a person and have unrealistic expectations. The important thing is how to get out of such a situation. So one way to go at it is to say like, gosh, we need people with real leadership potential. We need the strong man or the strong woman to take charge, to have a vision for a way forward and to be so charismatic and powerful to sweep everybody along with it. So this could be a role for a savior. But if we look at the reality of what politics has kind of become, it is much more a marketplace for lobbyists. So there's various factions, uh, there's of course the Americans with their interests, there's the Sunnis, there's the, um, uh, there's the uh, Shiites, uh, there's the interest of uh, the US, uh, there's the old colonial powers like France and Britain in this instance, and um, all those little factions and little people who seek to advance themselves or who want to let their own little fantasies roam free as little kings of their own militias or their own villages or their own areas of the city. And um, it's very hard because there are lots of factors and um, there's only a limited amount of power and wealth and influence to go around. So not everybody can be satisfied in this case. So and inevitably there will be people who will be dissatisfied and no matter what the outcome will be, um, because there is simply not enough for everybody's ambitions. Um, 
So ultimately there needs to be a dominant person who can say like okay this is for the good of the nation and too bad if people are ambitious but they will have to be disappointed and I'm willing to stand up to them and to disappoint them or to keep them in check. So this requires an amount of force and possibly violence but very problematic situation. Um, this negotiation as it is now currently going on because this is more the status quo of, of modern politics there's not so much a leader but it's a marketplace like I give you this you give me that and let's try to cut some other power or some other group out of the deal so but this modern system of politics will always create victims always disenfranchised who are not adequately represented or whose representatives or champions do not have enough skill or strength in the political arena. Um, so it is a rather um, hard situation to resolve and I don't think a perfect resolution is possible. Um, what would be best is probably um, to look at a little bit the bigger picture. Like what is the role of, of, of Syria on a spiritual level, on a, on a larger scale. Now, Syria is a very old country. It has often been a seat of, uh, yeah, of ancient empires, of knowledge, of religions, of science. So it has a very innovative impulse. And ultimately what we want to move into as a world in general, not Syria in particular, is that there is room for uh, personal growth, for individuality. And it also means that in a way the power structures should not be so much uh, prisons which uh, yeah, lay down the rules and the laws for everybody to obey, but rather create a framework of services for the individuals to develop themselves. And um, this is a very, type of, uh, very different type of leader we're looking for right now, than which is traditional or which is even rising um, in the current Syria because we see that instead of like the political leaders we go back to uh, uh, which are yeah, in a way merchants of power we go back into a more uh, yeah, older time frame where we had a military leadership a military dictatorship and ultimately we should be moving more really towards a true democracy um, which is where the individual is in, in, in charge and that certain facilities are community owned or community run rather than yeah, in the control of a few capitalistic uh, powers. Um, but this is a very big change to make for a country. Um, I don't think it's impossible but I do think we have to be realistic about it and such changes can take a generation or more for it to really come to fruition. But it is something which should be started and it is something which can't really be built in the middle of a war zone. So I would agree with the UN that a ceasefire or something like that is necessary. Um, and that also means that certain powers have to accept the reality um, that it is impossible to have this absolute power, this absolute control, which both sides are actually striving for. Uh, so whether the rebels or whether Assad, they're in a way still aiming for a totalitarian regime even though they may call themselves to be in favor of democracy. Uh, it is a kind of democracy which is still not serving the people but serving their own interest and serving their own power group. So unfortunately in this battle there is yeah, not really a right side or a wrong side. There is in a way... Um, yeah, just the possibility to try to look for the lesser of two evils and that should be the side or the group or the combination of groups which is able to lead Syria into a new age, more enlightened age of personal freedoms. Um, if we look at the, the current leadership uh, we find that they find themselves um, rather troubled because if you look at earlier uh, attempted revolution um, they were put down rather, rather brutally by basically a show of force and by in a way crushing any resistance by showing you have more power and this is very much a, a military way of thinking, a warrior's way of thinking. 
Um, and this warrior culture is still quite strong also within the Syrian people. It is not by necessity a wrong way, but um, if you go from a warrior's perspective, then you would have to go yeah, through a feudalist uh, uh, yeah, evolution, where every little region has their own little yeah, warlord, there's more factionalism, and ultimately these yeah, warlords have to yeah, agree on common laws, and, uh, on a common um, national goals in some kind of an assembly, and this way order can be restored by having, in a way, local people choose local leadership and this local leadership should yeah, try to resolve things as peacefully as possible. If you look at the more modern system, I said, it is much more of an arena of power brokerage and money enters into it. And because money is a very yeah, good system to influence power, to influence votes, to influence decisions. Because people are very prone to greed. Um, so instead of, like in a way, the interest of the local people, you would get international interests, uh, lobbyists uh, coming in to yeah, restore order and to reshape it in basically a capitalist model, whereby uh, the people in power get more chances to enrich themselves at the expense of you know, other people who get the illusion that they have the chance to enrich themselves. Um, but this can also be a relatively peaceful society, or well, at least the peace is, or the violence is much more financial than physical, which is already an improvement. Um, ultimately, though, we want to uh, have a look at are there unifying ideals, are there unifying motives for the people, things they strive to together, and is there a person who can embody these ideals, who can say like, okay, I can speak for the majority of the Syrian people. I can see the future uh, which yeah, lies ahead of you, which should be the ideal we all want to work towards. And let me inspire you, let me guide you, and let me do this together with you, building this new future. Such a leader um, is quite possible, but it's difficult for such a leader to come forward if he or she is seen as a threat by all the other powers. So the other powers have to recognize that such a leadership is in their own best interest, as well as in the people's best interest and in the country's best interest. So it requires a certain humility to recognize that such a leader is actually acting from a higher motivation, a higher morality than their own. And once this humility is there, then it is possible for such a leadership to evolve or otherwise such a leader needs to be recognized by enough people and to be carried and protected to the top, to the position where they can affect that type of leadership. And this holds true for every country that we need to look for leaders like that who can inspire us, who are in a way yeah, blessed with a vision of how to lead and where the people yeah, should go and what steps should be taken in every situation. Thank you for listening.